Today is the 100th birthday for my mother, Dorothy Manon. Now, Dorothy passed away in 2010 from this earth, but on this 100th birthday, I want to share with you some of the significant things that really helped me become who I am, because Dorothy Manon was my mother and Dorothy Manon was in my life. So I'm going to start with things I learned growing up with her, and then I'm going to share a few things I learned as an adult from her. And then at the end, I have a gift for you that Dorothy created that has made a big difference in a number of my clients' lives, and I have a completely free gift for you at the end of this video. So Dorothy was just barely four when her mother died. She had a sister 18 months younger and a brand new baby brother who was four days old when their mother died. She was then with her dad uh, and the kids taken to Oregon and lived with her grandmother. So the dad and the grandmother raised those three kids. And along the way, Dorothy learned from her grandmother as she was get, becoming a young adult herself and she would want to do things her way and the grandmother had her way and they got a little bit you know, at each other, although they loved each other. And finally, her grandmother said to her, look, Dorothy, as long as you're in my house, we're going to do things my way. When I come to your house, we'll do things your way. Because there's really no right way and wrong way. There's just your way and my way. And then a few years later, my mom married and uh, married my dad. And her grandmother did come and live with her for a number of years until she passed away. And she would again say, there's no right way or wrong way. There's your way. And now it's time for us to do it your way. So growing up, my mother had that philosophy that when she came to visit, like even in, in my room, she would say, this is your room. You get to do it your way in your room, and the rest of the house, it's my way. But the kind of respect for each of us finding our own way, that's one of the things my mom taught me. Another thing my mom taught me was something she called putting a zip in the day. And from the moment I can remember any memories about my mom, no matter what was going on, she was a child of the Depression. They didn't have much money. She and my dad struggled with money. They had tremendous amounts of love, but in their early marriage, he was in World War II, then he had to go back to the Korean conflict. She'd raised two little girls on her own during those years where he would be gone and getting by and you know just what it took to run a household and work and have two little girls. But no matter what the conditions were, it, there was no reason we couldn't have fun that day and put a zip in the day. She said that was a matter of attitude, not money. So putting a zip in the day had things had to do with like having our peanut butter sandwich on China. Uh, having our orange, uh, our orange juice in a little crystal goblet that she might let us use. Um, uh, saying a toast, you know, toasting uh, with the milk glass that we were having and wishing each other a great day. Driving home differently, having ice cream at breakfast. It was always something that kind of turned, turned the day on its end and said, here's a little something special that can happen in our day simply because we decide to make something special in our day. So a lifelong philosophy of putting a zip, something that gives you a, a sense of zip feeling in your day. That was a conscious choice for how she lived life. As I grew up uh, and became my own woman, Dorothy, I began to see how she parented. Now, she didn't have a mother who showed her these things. Maybe her grandmother did. I don't know. But I know that Dorothy was very, very shy growing up, and she'd had to learn to overcome really inhibiting shyness to be able to do the things, have work in her world, uh, become a professional woman, become the president of the, of the Women's Credit Union for the whole state of Oregon, things that early on it would never appear that she could do these kinds of professional things. Also, her most successful thing in her whole life, she believed, was her 63-year happy, loving marriage to my dad. As I was a young woman building my own family, um, I started to notice how my mother's parenting uh, of adult children, my sister and me, was, was happening. And she had an amazing way of parenting adult children. Many of us have adult children. Uh, and learning it's one skill set to parent a child who lives in your home and you're responsible for their safety, their choices, where they go to school, all the kinds of things you decide for a child. And then as they become an adult, you know, what are you, what do you, what's your influence then? How do you do that well? How do you do that skillfully? And one of her philosophies about parenting adult children was that you never give advice unless you're asked or you ask permission. So I remember parenting uh, my two little boys. And one day, my mother was over. And I'm young. I was a young parent for my first two kids. And my older of my two young sons did something. And I said, bad boy. And she said to me, I saw her just kind of jolt with that. <laughs> and then she said to me, I won't give you any advice if you don't want it, but I have a thought about that. Could I say something? 
I said, okay, what do you want to say? And she said, I don't know what you believe, but here's what I believe. I don't believe there are bad children. I think children do bad things. You know, hitting his brother that way, that's not a good thing. But I don't think that makes him a bad boy. And I know that kids really respond to what we tell them they are. So maybe you just say, that was not a good thing, or that was a bad thing, but you are a good boy, and I know you can do better than that. That completely changed my parenting. But more than that, she asked permission to give that kind of advice. And that was not something that she did one time. That was something that she did her entire, uh, the rest of my life with her as an adult woman, the way my mother parented me. And it's completely influenced the way I parent my adult children, is you don't give advice unless you're asked. And if you want to say something, you ask permission. And you're not attached to them taking your advice either. So sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. As time went by, in her later years, my dad passed away in his 85th year. My mother was going to be 85 that summer. That was a very dark and difficult time for Dorothy. As all of us have in our lives, dark and difficult times. First six months, she was just in a deep, dark depression, and um, we were all concerned about her. We took her places and did, tried to do things that would help fill her time. And finally, at the uh, six or eight months after my dad called or died, she called me one day. And now my mother had been around my work, but she'd never been in my work. And she called me one day and she goes, this is how the conversation went, in this tone of voice too. Well, I said, hi, mom. She goes, well, I guess if God's still breathing me, <laughs> I guess if God's still breathing me, then there's something I should do with my life. Let me try that dream builder thing you do. <laughs> I'm known in the world as the dream builder expert, as someone who helps people take their dreams and turn them into their results. She said, let me try that dream builder thing you do. I said, OK, well, when do you want to start? And she says, well, what can we do now? And so we just began with a conversation about was there anything that she'd ever thought about doing that she hadn't done, any interest she had she hadn't explored. We're just looking for an opening to new life. And in that conversation, she mentioned something I never knew, that there had been, over the years, she had never explored an interest that she had in an artistic practice called China painting, where you paint on China. And um, so we just began with an exploration into what possibly might give her life. And she decided that she would just explore. She wasn't sure she was going to take a China painting class, but she would ex at least explore China painting classes. And that's how dreams are be begun to be built, where you just have an interest and you start to explore it a bit. And over time, I will say to you, Dorothy not only took classes, she dreamed a dream of creating gifts that she would give all her children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, dreamed the possibility that maybe even one of her pieces would be in a gallery in the Northwest. Over time, she became so good that not only did she leave us all legacy gifts of her China painting, but her, she was in four different galleries in the Northwest with some amazing pieces that she had painted on China that were shared in these galleries. Dorothy, as she was approaching her 90th birthday, she started thinking, what can I do? She was about 87, and she thinks, well, OK, I'm 87. I've, I'm now a you know, well-known China painter. I've made all these gifts. You know, what am I going to do for my 90th birthday? And she decided she wanted to do something that left legacy. So she created a nonprofit. Her dream was to help, because she had been a, a, a woman who had gone through two wars where her spouse was gone and knew how difficult that was. So she wanted to create a micro-lending nonprofit. She had heard Mohamed Yunus, uh, Yunus speak about the micro-lending. So she did this, started this little nonprofit, got people to contribute to it, that would do micro-lending for spouses of service people who had either been killed or injured in both the Iraq and the Afghan war. And she built that for the, North, the whole Northwest uh, veteran and um, spousal community of, of veterans. And many, many, many young people who had kids whose spouses had been injured or killed began home cottage industries because Dorothy Mannon decided to do something and didn't let age be her deterrent. And one of the ways she funded that nonprofit was that she created her legacy piece called Put a Zip in Your Day, 90 Ways to Put a Zip in Your Day. As she was turning 90, she took 90 of her favorite ways to put a zip in your day and put them in this little book. And she sold that book. Well, a couple of years after my mom died, I was speaking in Seattle, and I'd done my lecture, at the end of which people were lining up to talk to me. And there was an elderly couple. I thought they were elderly, older than me for sure. <laughs> They're coming up to me in line. And they you know, thanked me for the talk. And then they said, we, want, we have your mother 
to thank for our new dining room table. I said, you have my mother to thank for your, my mother died a couple of years ago. They said, well, no, we know, but her book, putting a zip in, her, in your day. And she said she had tried every one of these ways to put a zip in, in your day, and it, they all worked for her. So we decided to start trying putting a zip in our day by exploring the ways that she said to put a zip in the day. I said, well, how did that get you a new dining room table? And they said, well, there was one that said, do it on the dining room table. And I was like, oh my gosh. So put a zip in your day is a philosophy. You know, how you parent your adult children is a way of living life. Deciding that nothing can keep you from having a great day. No money, no problem can keep you from having a great day. It's all a matter of attitude. Deciding that no matter what your age, there's a contribution you can make and a growth you can bring to your life. Dorothy Manon left many, many legacy gifts for me. And I'm grateful that those gifts are continuing to grow and expand in my life because of the way she influenced my life. So I offer you these gifts today on her 100th birthday. I also am happy to send you a digital copy of this amazing full color book, 90 Ways to Put a Zip in Your Day. I know that some of these can absolutely put zips in your day and help you have a life you love living while you're living it. That's really the legacy of Dorothy. No matter what goes on in your life, you can have a life you love living while you're living it. So happy birthday, Dorothy Manon. Thanks for being in all of our lives.